Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut, and in this video what we're going to be doing is a review, overview, and comparison of my two favorite Linux distributions, PopOS and Solace. Now these two tastes of Linux are newer compared to some of the more established distributions like the raw Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Debian, some of those other ones, but they are both wonderful systems packed with functionality and they're both absolutely beautiful. So let's go ahead and jump onto the desktop and take a look at both of these distributions. Right off the bat, both of these distributions are wonderful platforms. The reason for this comparison is I myself am trying to make a decision of what to use as my daily driver. First, we'll overview and compare them and then run down the pros and cons of each distro. Starting off with Pop OS, this is a fork of Ubuntu created by System76, the popular Linux based computer manufacturer. Pop OS was released in late 2017. Now, this distro does not come with very much software or any type of bloat at all. The only items built into the distribution are the items required for general computing. However, they make installing everything you need to do very easy via their pop shop. According to System76, their target consumer base is STEM and creative professionals. Unlike Pop OS, Solus was built completely from scratch. What really sets this distro apart is their custom desktop environment called Budgie, built completely in-house. Solus seems to cater to the average user. On their website, it reads, Solus is an operating system that is designed for home computing. Every tweak enables us to deliver a cohesive computing experience. Solus is developed solely for the use of personal computers. Unlike most distributions, it does not have a industry specific version like that of for servers or other type of industry hardware. This distro has been around since 2015. Now comparing the performance of these two distributions with modern hardware, the performance of these systems has been unrecognizable in my testings on both VirtualBox and on my X260 ThinkPad. Running both systems as a fresh install do result in some slight differences with RAM and CPU usage. At idle, POP seems to run somewhere between 1 and 4%, while I've seen Solus go up to 7% while idle. Now, usually they both run right around or under 4 to 5%, so there's not a significant difference, but I I did realize Pop OS does run with a little bit more RAM, usually about a gig to 1.2 gigs, and I had Solist at idle with nothing in the background running at about 800 megabytes of utilization. Both systems quickly boot up and give the user a very smooth and snappy experience. Now going into their software centers, the software center within Pop OS is nearly perfect. It's borrowed from elementary OS and rebranded as the Pop Shop. It is extremely user friendly and resembles a mainstream commercial app store and has a huge repository of applications at hand. The software center in Solus is basic but impressively quick. It has all the general features you need as well as a dedicated section where you can download popular third-party applications that are not typically available in these repositories. An example of this is something like Spotify or Skype, which those are not open source programs. Thus, most operating systems, most Linux distributions don't really favor them or make them as easy to get as open source software, but Solus does kind of have a little perk that you can quickly get those things that you're probably going to download anyway. There are some complaints though, with one of the main complaints being the lack of repositories by default in their software center. And another big issue I have with Solus is to search for an application. You have to go to their specific search tab. And then after searching for an application, if you click on it, you just can't click on the search tab again. You actually have to use the back button to go back and search again. Adding a search bar to the top similar to what is in Pop OS would be greatly appreciated. And that takes us to updates. Luckily for Solus, releasing fixes for things like this is very efficient. Solus is a rolling release operating system, so about every Friday, a new batch of improvements are released and a simple command will update the entire system. Some systems have issues with rolling releases, but I personally have not had any issues after an update. As far as I can tell, there has not been any reports of other users having issues, at least within the last year or so as this distribution improves. The core advantage to rolling releases is that they'll be able to land features with a higher velocity 
and properly maintain that velocity over time. Because of this, they can and do make improvements very quickly. Pop OS, on the other hand, updates just like Ubuntu with large releases, usually months apart, but the developers of Pop OS seem to be on top of things when it comes to keeping their distribution in line with the Ubuntu updates. On average, a Pop OS release will come about three days after a major Ubuntu update. You can see on the table I have on the screen roughly the time period. The longest gap has actually been the 20.04 update, where it took them about seven days to come out with their release. And you can see it can be as soon as a day with the 18.10 release. It only took them a day to come out with their version. So now getting on to some distribution specific pros. Starting with Pop! OS, one of my favorite things about it is the smart auto-tiling feature. It's far more advanced than Solus. When enabled, it automatically tiles windows around the screen as you open them, and you can use the keyboard shortcuts to manage the tiles. This makes things like multitasking a wonderful experience, especially if you have an ultra-wide or a monitor with a high resolution. Another big pro is out-of-the-box support for NVIDIA cards. During installation of Ubuntu or other distributions, you may have seen a checkbox during the installation that asks you if you want to enable third-party software and drivers. And that's when those drivers will download and then be enabled when you reboot the machine. So Pop! OS went ahead and made a NVIDIA-specific ISO, making it so the driver is actually active during the installation and it's active on the live disk image, which that cuts down on a lot of issues, a lot of potential black screen issues and other GPU related issues that some people seem to have with NVIDIA drivers when installing or utilizing the ISOs of other distributions. Now with Solus, the main pro, as we discussed in my opinion, is the rolling releases and the fact that it is a completely unique operating system coded from scratch. The main pro to Solus is the Bungie desktop environment. It's not incredibly customizable out of the box with only a few theme or customization options, but you don't really want to make any modifications because it's already so beautiful. The desktop is highly stable with a traditional feel, but with modern elements you'd come to expect. The most standout feature is the Raven menu. This menu pulls out as a clean looking sidebar when you click on the bottom right of your taskbar and it makes us so you can see your music, your calendar, contacts, has a notification tab, and you can customize, add, remove the applets with the Raven menu. Now this whole look is very similar to what Mac OS X did with their notifications panel. Now jumping into some cons, Pop! OS actually has a very few cons. Now the one that stands out to me the most is they only support 64-bit systems. This limitation can be a major con for those with older computers. However, this could be looked at as a step in the right direction because just the idea of using a 32-bit system today is painful. Another con is the lack of media codecs, and that's slightly annoying, but understandable. Generally, you are going to have to do some work after you install Pop! OS to get the system up to par as far as functionality compared to other distributions, including gathering some software you're going to need, installing these codecs, and adding a few other functionalities. I did an entire video on the things you need to do once you install this operating system. Something as simple as adding a minimize button is included in that video. So go ahead and click the I, check that out. Video will be in the description down below. But going on to the cons of Solus. Now the very first thing I noticed when testing out this operating system was the lack of a USB boot writer. This was very distasteful because Pop! OS, as said, already doesn't come with that much software, but it did have this. And this was distasteful because I just used the USB writer in Pop! OS to flash Solace onto my USB so I could install it on a laptop. So moving on to the next one, Bungie is probably the main reason most people are attracted to Solace. It's a modern and elegant desktop, but as we mentioned, Bungie is not very customizable. There are only a couple themes to choose from and all you can really do is change the wallpaper, cursor, icons, and customize some of the panels and applets within the Raven menu. In Solace there is no app launcher, so you're going to need to pin applications to your taskbar or open them up from the start menu. 
Many long-term Linux users are used to using app launchers such as the GNOME launcher in Ubuntu, and not having this may be a major turnoff for some of those users. Personally, I prefer a more traditional feel, and as someone moving from Windows, this may be a more comfortable type of environment. So, the end of the video, the conclusion, comparing these distributions is rather difficult from a performance side, they both run great and deliver a great computing experience, and ultimately it comes down to user tastes and individual preferences. If you're used to GNOME and switch to Pop! OS, you're gonna have an outstanding experience. If you're used to a traditional Windows-like desktop environment, or even the Linux Mint Cinnamon environment, you're gonna have a good time running Solus. If you're someone who is into Ubuntu, but you are visually impressed with the Bungie desktop developed for Solus, you may consider looking to the dedicated Ubuntu Bungie distribution. As a matter of fact, if you're switching from an Apple computer, I would highly recommend you check out Ubuntu Bungie. Ultimately, Every distribution caters to different people and you're gonna need to play around with all the different distributions you're considering. I used Pop! OS on my laptop for about a month before I installed Solus and I've been using Solus for about two weeks. For now, it is my preference to continue using Solus, but I do have a issue with distro hopping. So ultimately, we will see. All right, thank you for watching. Everything I talked about in this video will be down in the description through a article on techhut.tv. Like I said, if you want to check out that Pop! OS 5 Things video, it will be on the i right there, or you could go down to the description to check that out. For more videos like this, do not hesitate to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Give this video a thumbs up. It helps tremendously for others to find it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if there is something critical that I did not mention, you can go ahead and leave it down in the comments below. I hope you have a great day and goodbye.